Part Radio Group. Capturing the moments that make life great. Let's go, girls. It's about growing personally and professionally. What's the one thing that really drives you, that really drives your passion? It's about climbing the ladder or opening a new door. Too many people give up too early on their dream. It's about enjoying your professional journey. I enjoy what I do. It's about keeping things real. So the interviewer is an interview in the interview. I like this. It's all about you. But I knew that there was something else I wanted to do with my life. I knew I wanted to help people. This is Up or Out with Connie Fife. You love your voice. You need to be on radio. And now, <laughs> your host, Connie Fife. Hi, this is Connie Fife, your Unstoppable Diva, and welcome to the Up or Out with Connie show. I am so super, super excited because we got some really great news this past week. Um, I, before, when I was on my old network, I was on iHeartRadio and SiriusXM and Stitcher and so many networks. I mean, we're, on, we're hitting 900 stations around the globe. So about a year and a half ago, almost two years ago, I had left my network and went independent as Connie Fife with the Upper Out with Connie. And since that time, we've re rebuilt our message. We've rebuilt our relationships with all of these networks, except two that were still remaining. And we finally got confirmation that we have been picked up by iHeartRadio and Sirius XM. It came last week, and I was doing my crazy lady dance because I was just so super, super excited about that. So we are, that, that number now has increased. Um, our listener base, uh, we're up to, including all of the networks, C-Suite Network, iHeartRadio, SiriusXM, iTunes, Stitcher, and so many others that are out there. We're hitting nearly 2 million listeners. That is like, so exciting for us. You know, I mean, the, the Five team, and we're just overly so excited about this is happening. But I want to thank you because without you, without our listeners, this wouldn't happen. So I'm going to continue to ask you, listen to the show. We hope you enjoy the show. Let me know if there are some more topics or something more relevant that you want to talk about, whether that's women in the C-suite, moving up in corporate, moving out in corporate, learning more about the Upper Out Network. We want you here. And then also head on over to iTunes and look for Upper Out with Connie and make sure you, just, you subscribe to our page because again, without you, none of this would be happening so I want to thank you thank you all for what you do I am here to serve you and again let me know what it is that I could do for you and we'll continue to make this the most awesome show on on the airwaves so let's get back to it let's get back to our show really quick so let's start out by asking you the question I always ask do you have that desire to move up in the boardroom are you looking are you still concerned that you're not being heard or are you dreaming about entrepreneurism? Well, we got it all for you. And that's what we bring to you each week with our guests. And today we have a woman who is kicking ass. She is making it happen in the C-suite. And we're just going to, we're going to get to her just in a couple of minutes, but I still have some housekeeping that I need to take care of. So let's start with our quote for today, which I thought was pretty, pretty awesome, pretty relevant for, for today and what we're going to be talking about. And and the quote is, tell that negative committee that's way deep inside your head to sit down and shut up. Push them away. Tell them to go away. If you're a woman C-suite and you want to make it happen, we're going to help you make that happen and we're going to help you get there. So today's challenge question for that is, how committed are you to achieving excellence? How committed are you to achieving excellence? Because only you can make that happen. So stay tuned. We're going to go uh, jump off really quick for our sponsor break. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Connie Five, your unstoppable diva, host of Upper Out with Connie. I am thrilled to be a headliner host on the C-Suite Network, where you can grow your brand, grow your tribe, and be unstoppable together. We are the hottest podcast for C-level executives and entrepreneurial leaders. Each week, we interview content leaders on Leadership, personal brand, 
business, and influence. Continue to hear me right here on the C-Suite Network, also on iHeartRadio, SiriusXM, iTunes, and over 900 networks around the globe. Follow me on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter because you don't want to miss any of the good stuff. Until next time, this is Connie Five, your Unstoppable Diva. Be bold, be connected, and be unstoppable together. We're back and you're listening to Upper Out with Connie and it's time to turn up the volume and always stay tuned to the end of the show because you never know, we might just have some exciting giveaways for you. So let's just jump right into our guest now. And uh, our guest, she is the CMO for Liberty Tax for the past 18 years. Prior to joining Liberty, she was Director of Communications for Jackson Hewitt. She graduated from Denison University with a degree in communications in 1979. Today, she represents 6% of women in the C-suite. 6% of women in the C-suite. Welcome to Upper Out with Connie, Martha O'Gorman. Hey, Martha, how are you? Hey, Connie, I'm doing great. Thanks so much for inviting me on. I'm really looking forward to this. Well, um, thanks for being here. And I know you are the chief marketing officer. And my gosh, you've been doing it for 18 years. That's a record in, in many businesses. Well, that's what I'm told. I think the last statistic that I heard about it was that most CMOs last about 24 months. So I think I'm probably in an elite class of women in the C-suite and especially with the longevity that I have experienced with Liberty Tax. So, and and I say, I I watch those numbers, those percentages, and again, 6% of women in the C-suite. Now let's, let's take that with women with the longevity, that probably drops down to about 2%. (laughs) because it's just it's just not and and you know I come from a lot well I come from the nonprofit background and I had someone who was director of development for an organization I was working with and she had said to me she's like oh I think it's time to change jobs and you're right it was like 24 months and you know somebody else had even said to me and I was also coaching her senior director and he said, how often do these people change, especially fundraisers, marketing people? And I said, it's about 24 to 36 months. Mm-hmm. You could expect them to be gone. Right. But, what's, but what's really, really interesting is I'll start working with a new company and their marketing person will be somebody that I knew from a different company. <laughs> so it's like all in that vein, all in, all in that world. And they're always, you know, they're moving around. So congratulations for that. Thanks. And I think part of the key to my longevity here is that I'm also one of the original founders of Liberty. Oh, so okay. This is, um, this is like my, my child and, and yes. I'm raising it now to maturity, sending it mm. off to college or whatever the case may be. But uh, yeah, so I've had a lot of vested interest in, in being here and staying here. And if you can imagine the changes in marketing with technology and the digital and, you know, we we started Liberty, you know, right in the early days of the internet. And so um, I've really kind of been on, you know, firsthand experience with watching all of that grow and develop. And so it's been, it's been an amazing ride. I bet, I bet. So I, and, and I know I've seen my changes from you know, CEO of a corporation to having to do it my, you know, myself as an entrepreneur, but you know, you're still there. You're in the same, that same seat. So what drastic changes do you see, or I guess, how have you adjusted? Yeah, it's, it's been, it's been interesting from the standpoint of, like I said, I was kind of on the ground floor when the internet came on, on board and then with all of the digital marketing and then social media. Um, and so I've kind of learned as each one of these new facets has been developed and it's been really, it's been really, really interesting. Number one, but number two, it's allowed me to stay on the floor. Front. So I haven't, yeah. I haven't, you know, become a dinosaur yet. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know about you. I think we're about that same generation. <laughs> uh, I, I remember um, when 
they were coming in and only certain people had computers. And then, uh, and then only certain people had those passcodes. And then it was, oh, and you can go out there searching for something. Well, then that was only limited to a certain number of people because of the way we did business and the cost of it. Right. You know, at that point, it was cost per person or cost per hits or per, per links. So it was a very you know, compartmentalized on who could use that. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember having to... to I guess having to do it to learn how to use a computer because I, you know, we didn't grow up in that generation. I went to typing classes. So <laughs> I had a computer in front of me and one of um, my employees were there and we're sitting there and I could not figure out how to do a copy and paste. I was, <laughs> because it was so sensitive. I remember trying to like, okay, put the mouse down and then drag it. And I'm like all over the place. And, it, and I didn't realize I had a crew behind me laughing at me. Oh, yeah. So, so I guess at one part, they were, they were laughing at the boss and they thought it was great. And I said, okay, I'm like, all of you are going to do this because I don't know what I'm doing. But you have to stay relevant, like you said, you become a dinosaur. Right, right. And, and just stay on top of all of that technology. Yeah, and it, and it changes every day. So... Yeah. So it's not something that you learn it and then, and then use it. You have to continually learn it and right. then figure out how to use it right. as you go along. And um, mm -hmm. I, I really enjoy it, though, because it is. Every day is, is kind of a new adventure. And yeah. it wasn't like that back in the olden days, you know, where <laughs> We're buying TV and radio and, and placing newspaper advertising. Right, right. And, you know, and even, you know, for me, I, I mean, my advertising strategy, I know is different than yours and you, and you do guerrilla marketing tactics and I do a bit of that as well. But it, but it is, it's every day, like, how do you do that? I'm on Google more, I think, every day, just Googling, how do I? Right. <laughs> How did we live without it? I know. I know. It was like, how do I? It's, it's fun. Or I'll call my son. And, um, of course, you know, he's in that area in, in technology and engineering. And I'll say, how do I do this? And he'll be like, Mom. He's like, what do you do when I'm here? Like Google. <laughs> and then my daughter, who's a teacher, she's not on she has a computer, but she's not on that much. And like for her, she'll be like, no, I'm not on Facebook. I'm not on LinkedIn. I'm, she's not on any social media platform because she's a teacher and her husband is also special forces in the military. She said, no one needs to know what I'm doing, who I am. So she tries really hard to stay out of, out of that area, but she doesn't need to be. So, um, I mean, I know we're digressing, but I really want to learn from you about the campaigns that you've created and creating those memorable campaigns for Liberty Tax and that brand recognition. So tell, tell us more about that. Well, you know, the, the whole thing, the whole cornerstone of our marketing is, is around the Statue of Liberty. And yeah. um, that idea of having the Statue of Liberty as a mascot out mm -hmm on the roadside during tax season mm -hmm. it was really an interesting story how that came about. We were shooting a television commercial in Washington, D.C., and the response that we got to the person who was dressed up in the Statue of Liberty uh -huh. costume, painted green and what have you, right. so overwhelming that we said, well, if we can do that here, we can do that anywhere. And mm -hmm. um, that's how it kind of came about but we've been able to do so much more with it. So we use the Statue of Liberty in a lot of our marketing. Mm -hmm. We have a lady who actually is our Miss Liberty. Um, we call her Green Rachel because her name is Rachel and we paint her green. Okay. And um, she comes to a lot of events. She's been in a lot okay. of our television commercials. Mm -hmm. But the overall um, idea of having an iconic, mascot that people can relate to has been tremendous in helping us build our brand. So when I go someplace and I tell people that I work at Liberty Tax Service, right. that's the very first thing that they say is, oh yeah, you know, we, we have one down the street from us and we see the Statue of Liberty out. And so we've been able to build our brand in terms of brand recognition very quickly. And that's why, that's how people know us. And we hmm. got I, often, I often wondered with that person out there. Now mm -hmm. I have to tell you the person who we have here locally, 
she or he, I don't know, but they won the award for the best dance around the street. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to look that up and see who that is and send them a shout out. That's great to hear. Yeah, yeah. So, and I wondered if that was really bringing people in. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that it is. It does. It brings us about a customer for every two hours we have someone out. And if you think about it in terms of generating new business, mm -hmm. we pay anywhere between eight and ten dollars an hour for that okay. person to be out there. So you know, twenty dollars to get a new customer is really way below what it costs us with other types of traditional advertising. Right. I mean, if you had to do a billboard, you know, that would way, way, way more. And I don't even know if billboards are that relevant anymore maybe depending on what industry it is or what sector it is it, it might but I you know that's just been a question you know do billboards are they still relevant anymore do you still use them for Liberty we, we use them in a very limited way and yeah, okay um, what we do is if there's a billboard that's close to our location okay then we will we will typically take a look at it obviously we have to look at the traffic counts and things like that right, right. but if it's very close to a store yeah, that's about the only time that we find we have real um, impact from, from oh, okay. advertising. Okay, okay, all right. Well, that's pretty cool. So, um, so you talk about marketing on a budget, <clears throat> and I say marketing on a shoestring budget. So, besides having having someone standing out on a street corner, I mean, what advice would you give to a business, uh, a corporate business, or even a startup business? How can they really enhance their marketing on on a budget? Well, I, the the most important thing I believe, and and the thing that we've kind of hung our hat on, is that you have to let people know who you are, mm -hmm. where you are. And what you stand for. Those are three very important things when consumers are making a purchasing decision. And the way we go about doing that is um, very similar to having our waiver on the street corner. But we actually have people that go out in um, costume with goodie bags, you know, candy or chips or, you know, something that's going to uh, make people welcome you into their establishments. And we go around to the businesses in the area and we give, oh. we, we hand out the goodies, we okay. coupons behind, we ask the business owners if we can have some of their coupons so we can put mm -hmm. them in our offices. So the, the effort of reciprocity is important. Okay. But it's, it's all about being in the community, Connie. I mean, yeah. we are very community-oriented. We yes. do festivals and parades, and we participate yeah. in nonprofits and, and lots of different things that, that make people want to um, visit our establishment. We see you as that neighborhood friend, you know, giving, giving back back to the community. I didn't know about the goodie bags. Yeah. Um, I'll have, I'll have to watch that because I, I try to stay involved with the, with the community. Um, a lot of my work is, you know, internationally. So I'm not here as often as I would like to be, but it, when I am, I like to get to some of the events in the community and just to let people know that I'm here because this is actually a new community for me. I'm here about almost four years. I'm from, like, from the East Coast. So I'm still getting to really know a lot of the people here and the business owners here. And actually, I'm going to an event in a couple of weeks and I saw the list of the bringing in a speaker and and I was talking to somebody from at the chamber. I know the members are like, yeah, they were struggling for a speaker they didn't know. And, and I'm like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you heard of me? <laughs> like, like, didn't you know? Is it, you know? Don't you have telepathy? Like, you know. <laughs> so and that, that's part of getting out and marketing on the budget, or what I like to call creative marketing. And that was all the work that I always did with nonprofits as well creative marketing get out in the community do things in the community don't always wait for somebody to come and do it for you i know you're a nonprofit, but you still have to give to others in the community too so that that's really relevant yeah we used to one of our campaigns advertising campaigns several years ago was it's all good liberty taxes in your neighborhood because that's what we want people to remember that we are their neighborhood tax provider mm -hmm. So you mentioned delivering and dropping off bags to the local businesses. So are you primarily business or individual or do you have a mix? We do both. 
Um, okay. Small business is, is one of our niches. So anybody okay. that's a sole proprietor or, you know, has mm -hmm. a, a small business, um, we, we cater to those folks. And then, okay. of course, individual tax preparation as mm -hmm. well. Okay. Okay. Um, your rates, are they comparable to like H&R Block or any of those other places out there? Because everybody's like, oh, it's so expensive to go to go to a service. But I know for me, I'd rather have somebody else do it and protect CYA myself. <laughs> exactly. And you know, so our rates are, are comparable to yeah. an H&R okay. Block or another, another retail tax professional. Mm -hmm. But I will say this, that many, many people go to a certified public accountant and spend yeah. double or triple what yeah. we charge at Liberty. And for the most part, most people don't need that sophisticated of a service. But as you mm -hmm. said, I think it's worth the peace of mind. And, and a Definitely. lot of people will pay more to know that, that they've got somebody to stand behind them. Definitely, definitely. And you've probably heard of this, and I read an art, another article on it this morning, that there's some scam going on. People are getting phone calls from somebody saying, you owe taxes and you're going, you know, lawsuits against you. And I've had them myself over the last couple of weeks, and there was an article about it today. And in back of my mind, I said, no, I'm good. I had somebody else prepare mine. <laughs> <laughs> it just right. gave me that peace of mind because when you pick up the phone and you hear that, oh, well, there's a lawsuit against you for, from the IRS. It's like, what? The IRS will never contact somebody by telephone. <sighs> you, you, you can't get them by telephone. Never mind. Right. Well, they, and, and, they, <laughs> and they won't contact you. I mean, the, you know, the, they have, their processes is all through mail and, you know, yeah. they, Base. So I, yeah. I would say to anybody, and this mm -hmm. doesn't even apply just to taxes, Connie, there is so much stuff going on these days where people oh my gosh, yeah. are calling on the phone and tricking people into giving their social security number to them. Yes. Never, ever, ever. I don't care yes. who they say they are. Well, you know, the tax story even happened last week. They called my brother in Pennsylvania said on his cell phone said that they were looking for me because I hope now this was my brother I was mortified when he called me and it was like six o'clock in the morning my time here in the Pacific he's like I just got a call call from you somebody saying that you owe taxes and and you know they're coming for you I was like what <laughs> I was like what so that's why I've been looking looking at that and then again read that article it's, again it's a scam but there are so many scams out there, I mean, how many times do we get emails saying, oh, we have a million dollars left for you. Just send us your bank account information. Exactly. Like, so we can drain it. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So we could, so we could drain it. Um, yeah, unfortunately, that is going on. And what was really sad in the article that I read today was that there is no way that they can combat this hidden, you know, whatever it is that's going on, because if they just disconnect one phone they just immediately jump to another phone number so that's right that's so sad that's so it sad, is sad. yeah it so is. but liberty tax that's the place to go so we're going to take a really quick sponsor break and we will be right back and we're going to be putting you in the hot seat hi this is greg davis connie asked me to pop in for a moment to tell you about a great opportunity have you ever listened to a podcast and thought i should be doing that but i don't know how i don't know where to start well up or Out with Connie Fife has partnered with Park Lane Media Group to offer you PMR podcast production. What is PMR? Production, marketing, response. The three key elements you need to successfully build your podcast success. For more information, visit parklanemediagroup.com or email podcast at parklanemediagroup.com and be sure to let them know that Connie sent you. You have a story to tell. We'll help you share it. Come to parklanemediagroup.com today and start building your podcast success. We're back and you're listening to Up or Out with W-C-O-N-N-I-E. And joining us today is Martha O'Gorman. And Martha, we've been talking about guerrilla marketing tactics, um, being really memorable in the marketplace and marketing on a shoestring budget. And of course, we have Martha, who is one of the 6% of women in the C-suite. So all relevant topics in today's corporate leader and entrepreneurs needing to scale their business. So Martha... Before we jump into the hot seat, let our listeners know how they can learn more about Liberty Tax. 
Well, the best way to learn about Liberty Tax is our website, which is www.libertytax.com. And that gives you the history of the company. It tells you all about taxes. Um, lots of really, really interesting blog posts there. Um, different topics that people may not realize might affect them. The one that we're seeing a lot of activity on lately, Connie, which a lot of your listeners may be interested in, is this gig economy. And, and people who are, are, are freelancers or doing yeah. work, um, you know, there's, there's some tax implications that go along with that, with that kind of work. So you need to be careful and you need yes. to make sure that you're pre prepared for your tax situation. Yes. And, and that is a really good point to, to bring up about the gig economy because so such a high percentage of the population today that are in that sphere, in that area. And they don't, you know, they don't set themselves up properly. I mean, see, see your accountant, uh, mm -hmm. you know, your CPA or attorney, or go to Liberty Tax, and they, you know, they could share some information about that. Um, I know I started right from the beginning, because I was a financial advisor in a previous lifetime. So I mean, I knew enough to say, okay, but I mean, there was a chance it was like, okay, we're putting a shingle up, and we're going to do this. And there was no preparation. But you really do need to prepare for that from a tax ID number to a liability insurance to making sure that you are putting those dollars away because come tax time, Uncle Sam wants you to write that check. <laughs> Well, that's true. And I, I think that one of the biggest mistakes or, or mis, misconceptions that people have is about Social Security. Oh, you still yeah. have to pay your Social Security taxes on the income that you generate. Yeah. And a lot of people don't understand that and they don't realize that how that can add up over the course of 12 months. And all of a sudden you go to get your taxes done and you're hit with a big bill. And right. That's one thing that, that, you know, planning ahead and yeah. saving your money, it's really important. That is, it's really, really important. So good, good, good advice. We're going to jump right here and get you right into the hot seat, which is questions that only you can answer. So we've learned about the business. Now we're going to learn about you. So are you ready? Ready. All right. What is your favorite business quote? Oh my gosh, now you're catching me off guard. I would, I would have to say, you know, that it would have something to do with uh, following your dream. And whoever, okay. you know, whoever talks about following your dream, that's my favorite business quote. Good, good. Well, I was going to say, you have one right behind you. I see dedication. <laughs> Oh, that is the. If you, I, were, if my, you were stuck. <laughs> yeah, well, that's my um, that's my um, um, award that I got for being the first employee for of Liberty Tax Service in, in my in my fifth my first fifteen years, and now I'm on my oh. second fifteen years. So I don't know what will happen when I reach thirty. It'll be a bigger picture. <laughs> oh, absolutely, and a lot more dedication. Right, right. So, did you know what you wanted to do right from the start? Because I mean, your your degree was in communication, so I mean, you're still doing marketing. Mm -hmm. So, is this where you wanted to go when you first started out? Well, so when I first went to college, I wanted to be a lawyer, and I took my first poli sci class, and I decided I want to be a lawyer, <laughs> and and I was fortunate enough, you know, college does a lot of things for people. I don't mm -hmm. necessarily know that it prepares you for the rest of your life, right. but it does give you opportunities to find out what you're good at. And I got right. involved with the with the uh, college radio station at Denison uh, in oh, my okay. freshman year. And I just, I blossomed. I mean, I, I had found my niche. And so okay. it, that's what it's been. I've either worked in radio or advertising. And I would say that if I had to say what was my dream job, mm -hmm. I'm living it. Because I get to do okay. a little bit of everything and get to use all my skills, all my talents, and also my passion to make Liberty Tax Service the best that it can be. So I'm, I'm living the dream, Connie. Well, I, mean, I could hear, I could hear it in your voice and, and that is, you're doing exactly. And that's where the upper out comes from in the show, because I myself, again, was in corporate in C-suite, but then at the other side, I've worked with so many uh, executives in the C-suite that say, I love being here. I love what I'm doing, but I don't have that plan B. And that's where the out came in to at least let's prepare. Let's have that plan B in place. Doesn't mean you're going to use it this week. It could be next year or two years, but at least have a plan B. And I know when the Girl Scouts left me, I didn't have plan B. <laughs> I, was like, I thought it was going to be a fishmonger. I didn't know what I was going to do. <laughs> 
I even talk, my, my, I do have a brother who's an over the road truck driver and he's like, Hey, I make really good money. You could come join me. I'm like, Hmm, no, yeah, <laughs> we're not doing it. That. <laughs> that wasn't me. No, we're not doing that. So all, all business leaders, again, we all start somewhere and we may change. We may take a different road along the way, but what would you say would have been one of your failures that helped you find your success? Um, I, I would say that I've, I've had several failures. I, you know, I lost a job, um, when I was very young, which is devastating. And, yeah. you, you know, when you're, you know, 22 and 23 years old, I, I felt like a failure, like I would never yeah. pick myself up. Um, and then the other was that, uh, in, a in, a um, an advertising agency situation, we mm -hmm. failed. And um, that's actually how I got my start in taxes was because oh, okay. of that failure. I, I started working with uh, John Hewitt and mm -hmm. Jackson Hewitt and then now now here with Liberty. So I think that kind of is is the the typical story is that, you know, a couple of failures till you find yourself. Sure you and find who it. knows, you know, I mean, my, who, who knows what my next failure might be, but <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, I always learn from them. Yes. That's the most important thing. You're going to fail. You're going to fail 10 times, but make sure you pay attention to it so you can find that path. Right. So what words of wisdom, parting words of wisdom do you have for our listeners, those that are trying to find and pursue that path to success? Well, I, the, the biggest piece of advice is that you need to work hard and you need to persevere because yeah. we all know it's, you're not going to succeed in your, in your first attempt at business. Yeah. And it may not be until, like you said, till your 10th attempt. But if yeah. you give up along the way and just say, I can't do this anymore, that's mm -hmm. the biggest failure that you can have. I yeah. have always, you know, I'm, I'm one of those people that I say all the time when, when my family members or my employees mm -hmm. or anybody says, you know, oh, woe is me. Right. You know what? Fake it till you make it. Just yeah. keep going and, and just do it with pride. Yes, yes. My my daughter is always telling me because you know when she was younger, it's like, oh, this boy don't like me. Oh, I got to be on this test. I mean, because she was always striving, and I'd say, honey, did you try your best? Yes, that's all. That's all it takes. Try your best. Don't give up. So, but Martha, thank you for being here today. You've been amazing, and you're such an inspiration to to so many men well, and women. Well, thank you so much, Connie. I really, really enjoyed talking to you today. And you can also learn more about Martha O'Gorman herself by heading over to LinkedIn at Martha O'Gorman. So that's all we have for today. Martha O'Gorman, Chief Marketing Officer for John T. Hewitt Liberty Tax, the fastest growing tax preparation franchise nationwide. She's an original founder, which I didn't know from the beginning of the show. So again, Martha, thank you for being here. My pleasure. You're welcome. And we all, we all want to avoid that annual track to the accountant. But there's one thing certain that we all must do, and that is our taxes. So take some of Martha's advice to heart. Make sure you're protecting yourself because you don't want to get caught in the end with this big tax bill. And so where else do you go for that? You get it done? Liberty Tax Service. That's right. So do be sure to subscribe to our page on iTunes, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And remember, go there and subscribe. Go to Facebook page. When you see the episode, type in the secret word, unstoppable together. And that's when all of the freebies are going to start coming your way. So make sure you head over to Facebook every day. Again, when you see a new episode posted, unstoppable together is the secret word. Make sure you put it out there. Make sure you hashtag it, hashtag unstoppable together. And we will get whole loads of goodies out to you. So it's been great being here with you today. And ask yourself, if you could do something different to get a different result, what would you be doing right now? This is Connie Fike, your Unstoppable Diva. And until next time, be bold, be connected, and be unstoppable together.